All right, everybody. College basketball has reached the conclusion of week 15 for the most part. Now, there's probably still some games going on right now, but for the most part, everything is cool, done with. So let, let's get all the big stuff out the way first. Michigan State, they're on a free fall. It's sad because they lost to Penn State. They got dominated by Kofi Coburn and Jacob Grandison. You know, despite the fact that Illinois tried to give them the game, but Michigan State still lost, and Michigan State is falling, falling into a pit of despair that needs to be corrected soon. Izzo and company, y'all gotta figure it out. The Little Bit Providence was indeed, as advertised, a fun game, a really fun game, a high score game that I did not expect. And Colin Gillespie had 33 in this game, including a, a, one of the daggers, really, to put the game on ice, you know. Because Providence, Providence couldn't shoot the three ball well. And then, you know, Providence struggled against Butler today. So, you know, that, that's kind of weird. Kind of weird, but you know, you know Providence. Providence is a damn good team. A damn good one. Kentucky, you know, they got dismantled by Tennessee. Injuries have been plaguing this team. Plus, turnovers, the balls, the balls, the defense was all over Kentucky. They couldn't, they couldn't do anything. They couldn't do anything. But then Kentucky bounced back. They bounced back. Kelly Grady, Oscar Sheepway, they bounced back good against Alabama. They bounced back real good. That's the good kind of stuff you want to see right there. You know, real good stuff for the Wildcats. To Tennessee, on the other hand, they lost to Arkansas, who, you know, shut them down. Like, Tennessee was held up to 50 points, I believe. You know, and, and I can't remember what the final score was exactly. You know, because I do remember Tennessee, you know, not being able to come close to scoring 50 points because they couldn't shoot the three ball at all. Like, what was Tennessee thinking? Stop shooting the three ball. They, they shot, like, less than 20-something percent for the three. Just stop shooting it. Just stop shooting it. Just stop it. And they didn't they didn't just they didn't just not do that. They could not stop Arkansas from stealing it away from them, you know, at critical opportunities as well. So that's why, you know, Arkansas was able to get that victory there and move you know, move into the top four of the ACC, you know. A damn good Arkansas team that has been underrated by some writers all year long, you know. I think but if you, we know this is a good Arkansas team, we've covered them pretty good on this channel, I think. I'm, I, I've forgotten already, you know, week to week things get a little bit crazier. And then Wyoming, you know, they lost to New Mexico earlier in the week, but I think they bounced back. Um, but not a good loss, not a good loss there. Not a good loss at all. Rutgers, they just solidified themselves as a tournament team. Remember when we talked about Illinois and how they, you know, how Kofi Coburn was able to dominate? That didn't happen. That didn't happen against Rutgers. Rutgers schooled Illinois. Like they were little children. Kofi Coburn, I think, was a non factor. I, I was watching this game, and I do remember that Rutgers out rebounded Illinois by like 20, which is really, really sad because, I mean, that I mean that was just, I was just like, whoa. Well, this is really my first time seeing Rutgers play, so, you know, this year. So I haven't seen the play yet this year, but they've solidified themselves, you know. A lot of people have them projected as an 11 seed right now. They did lose to Purdue today, though, but, I mean, big win against Illinois. That's the type of stuff you need right there. That's the type of stuff you need, you know, from that. However, there are, you know, there there is a team, you know, that is just doing even better things right now. That is Texas Tech. Kevin Ovenar, Terrence Shannon, they, they ripped apart Baylor. Like, Baylor is injured the hell of back. We know this. We've been knowing this. But... Sweeping Baylor like that, Oof. and then they swept Texas. Yeah, yeah, y'all thought y'all thought Texas was gonna be, you know, doing something. They didn't do anything against Texas Tech because Texas decided to shoot the three ball. How how did that work out for Tennessee? Not good. How did that work out for Texas? Not good either. They shot less than thirty percent from the field. Texas did. Overall, they shot like 20% from three-point range. Stop shooting the three ball if it doesn't work. Nobody, it, it didn't work. Marcus Carr at one point was like 0 for 6 from the field. Pretty much a non-factor. Beard. What, what are you doing out there? What is Chris Beard doing out there? How are you letting Mark Adams school you? Twice. You let him school you twice. 
And the, the crazy thing is, is that Texas could have won this game. It could have won this game because Texas Tech, you know, was making mistakes at points. However, again, you live by the three and you die by it. And that's exactly what happened to Texas. They died by the three. Just absolutely insufferable. Bryson Williams was also a big factor in this Texas Tech win. You know, just a cohesive unit. Remember what I said earlier in the season that Texas Tech wasn't very cohesive? They're a cohesive unit now. This is a damn good team. A damn good team that is dangerous. They can play offense. They can do some damn good damage on defense. So, it's going to be interesting to see how Texas Tech fares the next couple weeks. Got some teams that have clinched a couple of titles, at least regular season titles. Murray State, you got a share of the OVC. You can win it outright, but we'll talk about that game in a moment here. Vermont, despite the fact that there are sexual allegations in seems against some players, uh, you guys won the America East. Good job. And South Dakota State has dominated the Summit League for so long that I just, at this point, I was like, wait, what? They're 16 0 in conference play? Okay. So, you know, hopefully an NCAA bid is coming, but if not, DIT is waiting for you guys. So more teams will be able to clinch their conferences this week, you know, at least, and everything like that. Um, we got to talk about the elephant in the room, though. You know, we got to talk about the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room, you know, that this is after, you know, Baylor also bounced back, by the way. Kentucky beat Alabama, like I was saying, you know, they Kentucky beat Alabama with Sheboy, Kelly Grady. I mean, Baylor was able to bounce back against TCU. But let's get into the real big one here. Juwan Howard. What a week for Juwan Howard. One of the weirdest weeks I think I've seen in quite a long time. Remember when we were talking about Michigan week one? This is not the Michigan team from week one. He picked up a technical foul against Iowa earlier in the week in one of the weirdest ways possible, and I forgot actually what the technical foul was about. But today against Wisconsin, as I was watching that in conjunction with the women's college basketball game between the number one South Carolina Gamecocks, led by Don Staley and company, who were going up against Tennessee, uh, that was a damn good performance by South Carolina, by the way. Go watch South Carolina women's basketball. Don Staley has something good out there, but we'll talk about that another time. But... In any case, um, this this Wisconsin team, you know, just beat up on with Michigan. Michigan shot also pretty bad from three point range. We're talking they were two for twenty at one point. Two for twenty, bad. That's real bad. But you know, the real beat of the batter happened in the final fifteen seconds and after the game. I thought with 15 seconds left to go, you know, things are going to be fine. You know, Wisconsin will just dribble the ball out, you know, dribble it up court. You know, no effort going to be given by Michigan because, I mean, Wisconsin has a bunch of bench players in. Michigan decides to go full press for some reason, causing Wisconsin to call timeout. Wisconsin able to advance the ball up the court, finally, and able to end the game because, again, Wisconsin was up by, what, 19? So there's like no reason to really do anything, but whatever. Juwan Howard got upset. He was upset. He was beyond upset. I don't know why, because Michigan was getting blown out. But whatever happened between him and Greg Gard, you know, Greg Hart apparently grabbed him first. We're talking about Wisconsin's head coach, by the way. Apparently grabbed him first. You know, try to you know try to explain at least now you should now you should try to grab a guy. You know. Just try to shake his hand, maybe, because that's exactly what was trying to go. I thought this is what was supposed to happen, because, you know, you do the line thing where you shake hands at the end of the game, but that, that just didn't happen. Howard got all up in Guard's face, and, you know, Guard was, I guess, trying to explain the situation, but maybe he did something wrong. I don't remember the audio exactly, but all I do know at the end of the day is that Joe Kravitzhoff, one of the Wisconsin um, assistants or whatever, he got hit with a haymaker, at least a slap, you know, right to the temple. And Juwan Howard, you know, this is not, this is not, this is not it, my, my guy. This is not it because you've had some altercations before. Again, the weird technical foul earlier in the week was already bad enough. You had altercations in the past, which I for, totally forgot about because I don't pay attention to the big day. I don't remember right? 
Saban Archer, they got fired basically by Maryland this year. That's my frame rates keep dropping for no reason. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Pure insanity. I, 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 just, I just don't get it. Like, I get it. Emotions are high. Michigan is not in a good place right now, but you got to get it together. You got to get it together. Michigan, you still have opportunities to make it to the Big Ten, to the Big Ten tournament and get yourselves in a good position to get an, a bid to the NCAA tournament. But this is not the way, man. This is not the way. So, I don't know. <sighs> anyway, my alma mater, UNT. I told y'all I was watching that game uh, of UNT and UAB and what a game it was. Tyler Perry, not the actor, not the comedian, not the writer, director, producer, whatever. Tyler Perry with an O, you know. What a game changer. Six three-pointers for UNT. You know, he made six for, for the mean green. Included the game winner against UAB. What a game it was for UNT. They've won 12 straight games. They avenged that loss against UAB, which was back in January. You know, But UNT and UAB, top of the class in the CUSA right now. Top of the class. Real good teams. I hope they beat one more time so I can see them one more time, you know, in Frisco. And apparently, you know, North Carolina, they have a quad one win now, which is insanity to me. Pure insanity. I don't know why. They actually have two, technically, uh, because, you know, some retroactive stuff has happened with the net, because the net gets updated every day. Uh, so, yeah. North Carolina, you got yourselves a win. That that looks good now. Keegan Murray, you know, on the other hand, he put up 24 against Ohio State for Iowa and Iowa, you know, who lost against Michigan earlier in the week, upset Ohio State. Uh, I don't see the correlation here, but, you know, it is what it is. But speaking of, you know, it is what it is, Florida just saved their season because Wendell Green Jr. made the dumbest, one of the dumbest plays I think I've seen in quite some time. F Florida upsets Auburn. Insanity, pure insanity. I, I don't I don't know. Speaking speaking of you know insanity, somebody get Tom Creed out of Georgia. It's getting real bad for Georgia right now. They're one in thirteen in conference play. It's, it's that's that's bad. That's real bad. You know, at least IUPUI actually got a win this week. I forgot to put that in my notes, but IUPUI with six players. By the way, remember they had six players and they got a win earlier this week and there's also the crazy thing of North Carolina Central you know down seven points getting three straight three pointers with you know as three seconds were in the game they were able to they were able to force overtime with those three threes and win the game and I forgot who they played because I forgot to put that down uh, I forgot to lift that right back up but because I, I don't feel like I have time to do that but insanity here insanity when we're talking this week in college basketball and then there's also you know the bubble the bubble hell oh, yes the bubble the bubble the bubble weird weird bubble we got because you know it's it's a, it's never changing one but a weird one west virginia oklahoma kansas state you notice i'm talking big 12 teams here and, and oregon who had a thriller with arizona but i mean that doesn't really mean anything when you lose. But again, these are the teams, these are some of the teams, you know, that are just not having a good time right now. They're in danger of missing the tournament entirely, looking at the NIT or the couch, you know, instead. Loyola as well, because if somebody steals Loyola's spot, because Loyola is, you know, the, technically the best team in the Missouri Valley, but now they're in a race, you know, with some of their other conference mates because they've tied, they're tied at least in conference standings because Loyola got swept by Detroit. You know, the Detroit team that was really good last year, not as good this year. Yeah, that Drake team. So the bubble, the bubble's gonna need some things worked out. There's three weeks left in the season, so you know before, you know everything gets crazy. You know, as you know, as, as things get crazy so we're going to talk about that as we're going to talk about some more stuff here in a moment here okay um sorry laptop made me charged so 
bit of an error on my part. <laughs> so the committee's top 16 seeds, you know, for right now, they've been revealed. And they were revealed early on Saturday, so these do not reflect the results of now. But these are just some of my thoughts on the one seeds. One seeds first, Gonzaga, Auburn, Arizona, and Kansas. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, Oh well, Kansas doesn't deserve a number one seed. I would I would agree with you because they played absolutely terribly for a good while now, and they've been shown up. You know, they've been shown their comeuppance in a couple of games this year. You know, at least late January and now February, they they've been shown their due diligence in getting smacked and beaten. You know, and outplayed in games, but Kansas is a one seed. Gonzaga's the number one overall seed, and that's probably going to be, you know, the way that it shakes out, unless somebody beats Gonzaga, you know, in the regular season. Not, not the tournament, regular season. Or the West Coast Conference tournament. Not the NCAA tournament, West Coast Conference tournament. So Gonzaga, number one seed. Auburn, still a number one seed, in my opinion, for now. Arizona, number one seed. That's been pretty much confirmed for quite some time now. Yeah. Damn good team with Arizona right there. Except for Kirk Carissa. He really is the damn villain here. You know? uh, two seeds, Baylor, Kentucky, Purdue, and Duke. You know, at this moment, a lot of people are going to be like, well, Kentucky should be a number one seed. But Kentucky doesn't have the resume. They don't have the resume of Kansas to be a number one seed yet. Notice that I said yet. It'll add up very soon. It'll add up. Because, you know, the Big 12 continues to beat up on each other. The SEC is looking a lot better. And, you know, despite the fact that I say that the SEC really isn't that good of a Power 5 conference, they're a really good Power 5 conference again this year. <laughs> so, you know, Baylor, a lot of people are going to be like, well, actually, it's just Texas Tech fans. They're like, well, we swept Texas Tech. They're out of Baylor. We, we swept them. You know, we, we swept Baylor, Texas Tech fans say. We swept them. Baylor is a two seed for a reason. Their entire body of work is the reason they're the two seed, right? At least the top two seed right now. You know, their entire body of work with all the quad one wins, they have like, what, nine? That's the most in the country. Good stuff. Purdue, you know, it's a good case of a good team, you know, that has a lot of good wins. That only Their only losses are in conference play. Duke is kind of a weird one because, you know, again, Duke doesn't actually really have anything. But again, you know, they've just been winning games, you know, for the most part, until they have it. Three seeds are kind of interesting, you know, again, Texas Tech probably should be a two now. I, I, I'd i say you flip Texas Tech at Duke at this point in time because Duke, again, has some pretty rough losses in there. You know, but Villanova being the top three seed is a good thing because, again, Villanova probably has one of the toughest schedules in the country. Texas Tech, again, you know, there. Tennessee, I, I'm fine with Tennessee being a 3C. Illinois, I'm also fine with being a 3C. Problem is, you know, when we get to the 4 seeds, the problem here is that they're just, I, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of 4 seeds, you know, there are at least a lot of teams that look like a 4 seed right now because UCLA's on a slide. Wisconsin, you know, they're a pretty good team who really shouldn't have been rated as high as they were early in the season. This is where more, I think, where they should be a four seed, a dangerous one, but still a four seed. Providence, who really shouldn't be a four seed at all, this is really a two or a three seed at best. And Texas, who, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, they shouldn't be a four seed, but who else are you going to put there? Ohio State? Yeah. Yeah, you th you thought I was gonna you thought I was gonna escape this without roasting Ohio State for having really nothing nothing of note because uh, have we talked about Ohio State in a positive way on this channel this year? No, aside from them beating Wisconsin earlier in the season, like whipping Wisconsin, that's the only time I can remember. I just don't see. I don't see it. I don't see it. Now there's other teams like Houston and Alabama who should be in consideration along with UConn, you know, that should be considered. But these are like five seats right now. You know, Texas is teetering the line, you know, between four and five, you know. So so it's gonna be it's gonna be real intriguing. Gonna be real intriguing, I'll say that much. So let's get let's get to this week because we gotta wrap this one up because I don't know, the last time I tried to record this was like twenty like damn near thirty minutes. 
but at least I can make it like 20 to 25. So Tuesday, Tuesday is going to be big. Villanova UConn, Villanova UConn, you know, already met once early in the season. Villanova won against UConn earlier in the season. That was like a couple weeks ago. That was a couple Saturdays ago, I think. Uh, Wyoming, Colorado State, big one in the Mountain West on Wednesday. Thursday's a big one, Ohio State, Illinois, trying to see if Ohio State can actually do something, you know, do something productive. San Francisco, Gonzaga, San Francisco, one of those teams in the West Coast Conference, again, you know, the West Coast Conference projected to get four bids in right now, but that's right now. I just don't see it happening anymore. I just don't see it happening, you know, with the WCC getting four bids. I see maybe three, honestly, might be even two, and maybe just one. You know, if things shake out the way they've been shaking out because the West Coast Conference, you know, the bottom teams of the West Coast Conference have been beating some of the top teams this year for some reason, and I just don't know why. But if anybody can stop Gonzaga, it, it could be San Francisco, but that didn't happen earlier in the season, remember? San Francisco got whipped earlier in the season, despite the fact that they were up very big early. And Murray State Belmont, probably, the big, probably one of the bigger ones on Thursday night. Again, Murray State can lock up the OVC for good, you know. And with the way the OVC looks, it's not going to hurt Murray State if they lose in the OVC tournament because Moorhead State and Belmont are damn good teams as well. we got to remember that. Got to remember that. And then Saturday is a big one. Saturday is a huge, huge day of basketball. Oh, oh, it's so wonderful to actually, you know, you know, watch basketball in a meaningful way again. It's just so wonderful to watch college basketball in a meaningful way. Auburn, Tennessee is a big one. Purdue, Michigan State, another big one. It's Kentucky, Arkansas, Wisconsin, Rutgers, Kansas, Baylor, the rubber match because Kansas whipped Baylor for the most part earlier in the season. St. Mary's, Gonzaga, USC, Oregon. You know, a lot of these games here look real fun. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Some fun. So, get Get your popcorn ready. Get, get the Orville Red, Red Bocker ready. Get it ready because it's going to be a one damn good Saturday. I'll tell you that much. And there's also Florida taking on Arkansas earlier in the week as well. So that's going to be big for the SEC. The big one. you know. So it's crunch time. Crunch time for some teams. Crunch time for the bubble. Crunch time. Got to get it together, bubble teams, right now. It's time. It's time for y'all to get it together. Chop, chop. Uh teams that are looking to become four seeds. Again, Alabama's one of them. Houston, Ohio State, UConn. Y'all gotta get big victories this week. Texas, you gotta bounce back. Providence, you gotta play better. You know, don't shoot bad threes against Xavier. You know, this is gonna be a big week for a lot of teams. It's gonna be a big week for a lot of them. You're solidifying your resumes at this point. A lot of teams are solidifying their resumes. A lot of teams are trying to make resumes that look good in the eyes of the committee. And, you know, Southland Conference Chair, and speaking of the Southland, you know, they're doing fine. They're doing fine, you know, with the way they've been making things work. You know, they're trying to make some innovation here in the last few weeks of the season. Make something innovative of these last few weeks of the season. There's not a lot of time left for a lot of these teams. The time is now. Not later, now. So you better get in shape, and. Okay? A lot of teams, you know, are going to be fighting for one of those at large spots, you know. So let's get to it. Let's get to it, teams. Let's get to it. So with that being said, I'm going to skedaddle. And y'all remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. And I will see you all back later this week. I think it'll be like a Thursday. Yeah, I think it'll be a Thursday or something like that. When we talk about the USFL, and then Friday, we'll go back into the world of arena slash indoor football, and then Sunday, we'll talk right back here about college basketball, you know, and get into the conference tournaments and everything like that, because those are going to start up, you know, next week, you know. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be real tricky. Uh, for all of y'all that are still here, again, do, as I said, like 30 seconds ago, you know, and I will see you all later this week. Take care, good night, good evening, or whatever you want to say, and I'll see you soon.